Evangelist Roxanne, and I'm excited to talk to you tonight about winning. I don't know about you, but I like to win. I prefer to win. If I'm going to enter a battle or a competition, I want to go for the gold. I want to be able to come out victorious. And the thing is that that's the way God operates. He plays to win, and he made us in his image and his likeness. So tonight we're going to talk about being triumphant learning more about scripturally what it means to triumph and to win and how we get the victory. You know, this year we have had a church confession that says that we are winners and winners triumph. And we all wanna be victorious. We all want more wins in our life. So let's go into this next week and kick off the second half of the year, proving how victorious we can you know, be. I think the church confession is a great place to start tonight, just because it reminds us that we are on a winning team, and we never go into a battle or a situation on our own. We are working with the Godhead, with Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and His angels in order to be successful, in order to experience the victory. And when we go forward into whatever situation, knowing that we're not alone, we should go in expecting that we are going to win. And when we win, it's called being triumphant. So to triumph in Christ Jesus, to win, to be victorious, that's what we all want to experience. And that's what happens when we partner with the Lord's team. To triumph means to achieve victory or be successful. So something to keep in mind here, it's something that we achieve. To achieve something, it has to be worked for. To be successful, you gotta tackle something. You gotta take on a challenge. You gotta take on a problem. So one of the things we have to recognize is that we actually have to fight. We have to get up and get in the battle in order for us to triumph. It doesn't come to us on the sidelines. It's not sitting and waiting for the Lord to do something for us without our participation. Our ability to triumph is because we work with God to achieve that victory and we become successful. Our efforts, our actions, our prayers, our work produces a great result, produces that victory by working with God. What do we win when we have the victory? I think many of us have heard this phrase, to the victor go the spoils. But spoils are things taken forcibly from a person or a place. Spoils have to be taken, right? They are won through the battle. They're the reward of triumphing. And if we think about this, we know that the enemy has taken from us. He's been victorious against us by taking things, spoils from us, things that belong to us that we let him have at different times in our life. So we have the opportunity to enter the battle and take back those things that he took from us, to make them the spoils that we reclaim, to be able to take the enemy head on through prayer, through spiritual warfare, to take him things head on and then take things back as the spoils, to be able to gain something. It's not just a matter of a gift handed to somebody. Spoils are taken, and it takes an act of force. It takes entering into the battle and fighting over something in order to get the benefit or the reward, the spoil that comes from the battle. Christ, I think, gives us one of the most powerful examples. Christ fought spiritually to become triumphant. 
right? And he won over the spiritual forces of darkness. And Pastor recently preached about the hierarchy, how we've got to have faith to address that spiritual hierarchy of the enemy. Well, Christ had that power and he showed that power right here. It says he disarmed those powers. He disarmed those authorities. And after he entered into the battle and he disarmed them, he made a public spectacle, basically a parade of them, showing that he had triumphed over them by the cross. See, becoming victorious for Christ how he conquered them, how he disarmed them, it was by a strategic action of dying on the cross. See, sometimes the success comes in a very unique way. He defeated the enemy because he surrendered to crucifixion. And that was something that the enemy was not expecting. The enemy thought he was going to win. But Christ understood, God understood that this key action, that if he did this, if he died on the cross, he was gonna, then going to be able to be triumphant. He was going to, out of that action, be able to disarm the power and the authority and then take the spoils back. Take what the enemy had been holding, the keys. Take back the power that the enemy had. And all of that was done because God said, now it's time for the battle and I'm ready to fight and we're going to take the spoils back. The scripture builds on that same understanding. See, we know that there was a prophecy about Christ in Isaiah, about Christ, but also God's ability to use the death of Christ on the cross to bring us all these spoils, to give us a share of the victory. It was a very strategic action that God had to engage in battle at that time. And the cross then was the way to defeat the enemy and go and take the king, keys of the kingdom and give something to mankind. It says, therefore, I will give him a portion among the great. And he will divide the spoils with the strong. Hold on to that because that's us that he is sharing his spoils with. Because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Wow. Think about this and whether God is instructing you to fight. If he's put you in the middle of a battle, it is so that you can fight. And if he's given you a battle to fight, he's prepared to work with you and give you that victory. God doesn't send us out into battles to lose. So if you're confronted with a battle you need to fight right now, know that there is a decisive action for you to take. Let God lead you in what that action is, because if you take that action, then you are going to triumph, and then you are going to have the spoils. So really think about and ask God if there's something going on that you just wish would go away, instead of wishing it would go away, turn and get ready to run into the battle, to achieve the victory, and go after it. But ask God what the secret is what it's going to take to bring forward that victory. Amen. One of those things that it said in scripture is that he was sharing or dividing the spoils with the strong. So that's pretty important that now we really look at what does it mean to be the strong? Because that's how I get the share. That's how I learn to do the same things that God did to be victorious. First, notice that the spoils that were claimed, let me back up a second, the spoils that were claimed out of this process that he forcibly took were so powerful because we know on the cross, him being numbered with the transgressors, he took back on that cross the power over sickness and disease. He took back the power over death, right? By his stripes, we are healed. 
He took the power to be able to redeem us and reclaim us no matter what we do wrong. See, the enemy has a right to punish sin. But Jesus said, go ahead, number me, count me as a sinner. Let me take all the pain of every sinner because as soon as I take it on me, you won't have anything to hold over any of mankind any more. Everything that we've done wrong, everything that we've done that makes us deserve to lose, Christ took it and replaced it with love and power. And the love and power of the cross took every loss for us so that nothing then the enemy has a right to say or do or use against us can be used to defeat us in battle anymore because Christ took it. He defeated it and he defeated its hold there on the cross. And everything that the enemy took back because of that decisive action we benefit from. We benefit because Christ did it all so that he could divide the spoils and share it with us as the strong. So now let's look a little bit more at what it means to be the strong. Realizing that that's who he shares the spoils with. There's a share out there for everyone, but we actually have to step in to claim our share and to benefit from. And as soon as we have a victory mindset, a triumph mindset, the winning mindset to be part of the team, we engage in battle and we start getting part of that spiritual share that Christ has set aside for us. The strong one are those having the power to move heavy weights or perform other physically demanding tasks. Do we have a mindset that we are able to move mountains, move anything that's an obstacle in the way? The strong, are we able to withstand great force or pressure? Believe that we can and we will. What Christ had to endure on that cross was horrendous. We can endure whatever is around us and not just endure it, but instead of letting it own us or disrupt us, we can turn things around and take it out when we have a mindset of being strong. The strong exert great force. We make our presence known to the enemy. We make our presence known in the physical, if we need to, be able to stand firm and stand strong for what we believe and what's important. The strong are those who are able to perform a specific action well and powerfully. The better we are at praying, the better we form a reputation in the spirit of being knowledgeable and knowing how to attack back at the enemy, we can get better at things in the physical and in the spiritual that make us a force to be reckoned with. The strong are also those possessing skills and qualities that create likelihood of success. Our spiritual senses get honed by exercise, by using them. The more we get familiar with the word, the stronger we become. People don't go into a huge battle right away. We start with the smaller ones. We build a reputation. We build upon our history. You get stronger and more confident as you get bold with the skills and the abilities that God has put inside of you. The strong are also those likely to succeed because of sound reasoning and convincing evidence. I'll tell you the scripture and the truth of the gospel is the most powerful evidence and tool that we have. There's a sound reasoning about why the enemy has to stand down. There's a reasoning about how we conquer. And the more we dive into the word and we understand what the enemy has to respond to, then we are convinced and we know going into that battle why and how we are going to be victorious. So set our minds about the truth and the power of the gospel and not let our mind to be up and down, to be shifted around by things that might be going on. 
we want to arise and be strong because that's how we get a share of the spoils. The strong are also those who powerfully use their mind, senses, and emotions. Those can all work against us, but the strong say, I'm going to use those tools. I'm going to use my mind. I'm going to use my senses. My emotions will make me bold and strong. I'm not going to let my emotions control me. I'll control them and use them to put down the enemy. I'll use them to enter the fight instead of making or allowing my emotions to get out of control and the enemy to use them against me. The strong are those not easily affected by disease or hardship. This too shall pass. It'll pass. Anything that I don't like today will be gone tomorrow and I can move forward. The strong are those not easily disturbed, upset, or affected. To realize that whatever's going on is not going to conquer me. I will triumph over it. I can handle it. I'll take care of it. With God and I on the same team, it is not a problem. I'm not going to sweat the small stuff. I'm not going to be disturbed and let the enemy disrupt my day because it's a day of joy that the Lord has given me. The strong are also those who show determination, self-control, and good judgment. Good, sound judgment. That goes along with controlling our mind and our emotions to be emotionally strong and to really think factually, what does God say about this? What is the worst that can happen and what is the best that can happen? And to become more balanced and focused before making a move. This is where we really work with God to think about what is the decisive thing that needs to happen to bring forth the victory and to really think through it and come up with a solution-based mindset of how to handle the situation. That's how we're strong and enter the battle for victory. But ultimately the strong are those whose beliefs are firmly held or established. A conviction inside of us that I am on the Lord's team, that I am strong and courageous, I will be victorious. I believe that. And I hold to that truth because I know who made me. I hold to that truth because if it's a battle in front of me, God created me to be able to tackle it and take it on. So to rise to the occasion and be strong, because if we're strong with God in battle, we're going to get the spoils. Notice that throughout the Old Testament, the Old Testament was full of physical battles that had to be won by the children of God. We have much more spiritual battles that we have to win as children of God. But the message was still the same. There was a charge all the time. There's a battle in front of you. There's a land that needs to be taken. Be strong. Be all of these 11 things. Be strong and courageous and go charge into it and enter the battle. Because by entering the battle, that's how you'll achieve victory. That's how you'll be successful and you will triumph and you will then get the spoils. So to triumph, we have to be willing to battle. Many of us want to shy away from a fight. We don't like how it feels. We're maybe doubtful. We're uncertain. We feel like it's confrontational. Well, as you notice with Christ, there's a way to do that battle that is smart, but the battle does have to be fought because the enemy doesn't want to give up any territory. We have to go forth and take it. And once we're willing to enter the battle, we have to have the mindset of strength. Look at those 11 things. If you're ready to battle and say, am I strong? Am I courageous? What is my mindset of victory because of who I am and whose team I am on? And once I have that mindset of strength, I'm going to enter the battle and I'm going to stay strong and I am going to finish the fight. I'm going to achieve that victory and I'm going to put this situation, this problem, the enemy down and behind me. 
knowing that when I close out the battle, it is going to be victorious and there will be spoils that can be enjoyed. You know, one of the, probably the most powerful things in Revelations is a scripture that talks about how triumphing happens. And in this scripture, it is all about us. They, the Christians, triumphed over him, which is the enemy. And all that the enemy brings are controls. The Christians triumphed over the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Revelations makes it clear that we're not loving ourselves so much and pulling back from the battle. We have to be ready to put ourselves out there into the battle, fight for spiritual things. And when we battle, we take on a decisive action that takes us to that victory so we can have the triumph. And in this, it says our decisive action is two parts. One is just by the blood of the lamb. That's Jesus's part. That's what he did. He sacrificed for us. But our decisive action is the word of our testimony. The word of our testimony is our part, our decisive part, when we enter into the battle in order to get to the triumph. So what is this word of their testimony? We know that words are really our confession. It's the profession of our faith. It's what's coming out of our mouths. But the testimony is the evidence that goes along with those words. The testimony really is the proof that we are strong. If I say I am victorious, those words are coming out of my mouth. But for me to say I am victorious and to act the 11 ways that shows that I am strong, that I am bold, that my mind, my emotions, everything is behind that, that I am bringing my skills to the table to tackle on the problem, that becomes a testimony. That becomes the proof that my words were real, that I had a conviction behind my words that I absolutely believed it. And anybody who looks at my life would see it, right? We should be accountable to make sure our actions align with our words, especially when they're words of faith. If we were called into court and were asked, were we strong? And then they started rolling video of how we acted after saying, I know I've got the victory over the last 48 hours. Do they see a video of strength or do we see ourselves wavering in that? Do we see ourselves not acting in ways that we're showing a conviction or proof, a true testimony that we had the faith that we say we have? Did it show up? Would a jury be convinced that we believed what we say we believe? That is our charge. That is the word of our testimony that has to line up with the blood of the lamb. He purchased victory for me. So now does my word and my testimony show that I have that victory in my life, that I am triumphant in each and everything. You know, we're each confronted with our own cross moment, right? That moment when we are challenged with a battle and are we gonna be strong and courageous to take on the spiritual and physical issues that are before us because we expect to be triumphant, right? Are we expecting to receive the spoils and not just that we have to fight for something, but that we're gonna win and we're gonna get the results, the rewards, the benefits by going in and taking by force what we know God has promised to us, what the, we know the enemy is holding on to, that he's just waiting for us to come after and come get, right? We don't want to shift to the back line. We don't want to be retreating. There's no reason for us to retreat when we are on the Lord's team and we are equipped to be victorious and triumphant in the battle. So whatever we end up being confronted with might look different. Nobody really is fighting the same battle, but we might be battling the same 
forces. And for the most part, the problem isn't even the battle. What we are always in is a faith fight. Are we able to have a strong battle cry because we totally believe that we're going to be victorious? The faith then really becomes that volume switch, whether we're whispering it, whether we're hoping it to be true, or whether we are really raising our arm and are we are ready to cry out and run into the battle. I am victorious. And our faith level is going to be determining how confident we can be when we make that battle cry. Right? So tonight, I want to pray that we are going to be strong and courageous and enter whatever battles before us, ready to be triumphant, bold in our faith fight with a mindset of triumph and victory. Amen. Father, tonight we thank you for the victory of the cross. We thank you for the power and the strength that it brings us. Father, so that we are able to go into battle and we're able to fight the good fight. We're able to stand boldly in faith because we understand the power and strength that you purchased for us. We know that the enemy is here to kill, still, and destroy. But you also put us here and you gave us the power to fight. You made our hands to war, Father. So teach us to fight the way you fight. Teach us to be powerful in the spiritual things, Father God, because we want to triumph for your kingdom. We want to triumph and experience that victory, Father God. So help us to step out and fight with wisdom and strength and power to bring the victory into our lives, into our communities, into the kingdom like never before. So, Father, we just thank you for this instruction. Seal it to our heart, Father. Bring it to remembrance so that whatever we see, whatever the next battle is, Father, that we can really run charging into that battle and experience the sweet, sweet triumph that comes from entering the battle in your name and standing strong until the end of it. Because the to the victory, Go the spoils, Father. And we thank you that you purchased some for us that we just need to reach out and take. In Jesus' name, amen.